Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on the various social media channels. We're up on these days, of course, live on air, online, streaming KTSMRadio.com, and full video on the El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as some of our partner pages, including Remember in El Paso when. And today is Saturday, May 6th, and today we are talking about a bunch of different subjects, including in this hour, the Las Cruces Railroad Museum and the many different aspects of history that are going to be on display with an event going on right now as this episode is airing. But this is, of course, the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso, and we do have a history moment today at top of hour two from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking about the history of Sacred Heart Church. But joining us here in studio right now for the first hour of this program, we are joined by Tori Pyle, education curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely happy to have you on. We're often interested in the different museums, facilities, discussions about history that go wrong around our region. And so, as we were coming up and uh, notice, and a lot of notice coming up about uh, an event that you all have going on again, as we are airing this, it is going on right now. So if you're just hearing about this, maybe an inch and you want to maybe uh, follow up with this on the car as you're headed out that way. Uh, but the Las Cruces Railroad Museum is, as far as I can tell, not a facility or a set of programs, exhibits, etc. that we've featured on this program. So for those that are unfamiliar, of course, railroads is a iconic part of both the Southwest and the landscape that we still inhabit to this day. But when it comes to the Railroad Museum itself, specifically, kind of what is it all that you do and the, the scope of what y'all cover? Sure, yeah. So the Las Cruces Railroad Museum focuses on uh, well, the railroads in, uh, in Las Cruces. Uh, mm -hmm. We are actually part of uh, a four-museum system uh, that is administered by the city of Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. um, and I work specifically at the Railroad Museum. Uh, and essentially, we cover the history of railroads in Las Cruces from mm -hmm. uh, 1881, when they arrived, up to really the present day. Um, it was kind of 1960s or so. The passenger traffic stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the 1990s, the uh, depot stopped operating, but it is still an active rail yard. Uh, and occasionally, yeah. um, okay. if you visit the visit the railroad museum, you know, freight train will will fly through. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, we we cover history of of railroads in Las Cruces from like I said, 1881 to today. Yeah, so this is, for those on of over on our social media, which we do have the full video, of course, we have an example of uh, from the rail side of the current depot, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Or uh, depot was the name for it, but uh, even if it's not an active, uh, I mean, the railway is active, and even if not passengers or, or cargo moving through this particular facility, it now serves as a museum. Yes, exactly. So, and of course, uh, the, one of the reasons we're talking about this is that going on, and the what area of it would you say that the actual event you have going on today is going to be happening in? Uh, it will be on the front end of the museum, kind of toward the south of, of the museum a little bit. Uh, so right from North Mesilla Street, you just arrive see the the museum you'll you'll see the event absolutely right so the front there so going on today is transportation day at the las cruces Rail Mount railroad museum and so it is going on again as we are airing it started at 10 a.m and it'll be going on through 1 p.m so if you're just hearing about this uh, you still got a chance to head out there and so the pictures that we've got up there and then the the tagline you'll have trains trucks bikes and more of course trains obvious because you know railroad museum and all that but that's why it's transportation day kind of overall with the many different features and ways people get around uh, even to this day but also kind of through the span of history we're talking about right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely absolutely um yeah i mean transportation has been multimodal for as mm -hmm. long as people have been moving um from place to place so it's a fun moment to celebrate kind of all of those different modes of transportation like you said uh that Kind of have changed uh, throughout history so we've got mm -hmm. some items from the past we've got a model a club and they're going to be showing right. some examples of their model a's which will be fun um yeah, antique this, cars this yeah. not necessarily one of theirs but an example of a model a mm -hmm. yep yep yeah and so they're uh antique cars from the early 1900s mm -hmm. which is pretty cool and exciting um you know up to present day we've got a lot of uh kind of utility vehicles construction vehicles from the city's left Las Cruces which okay. will be fun and exciting. Um, plus, you know, motorcycles. We've got some adaptive bicycles, uh, some model airplanes. So we've kind of 
got everything covered. Uh, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. So, for those that maybe missed it, where exactly is the railroad museum located? I mean, obviously along a rail line, but wouldn't recommend people just like follow the rail lines to find it. Yeah, no, probably probably not the best idea. Please don't do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, stay stay on the roads. Um, we're at three fifty one North Mesilla Street mm-hmm. in Las Cruces. So for those that are like coming from, you know, say I-10 or even, uh, you know, points north off of like I-25, what's the best way to get there? Uh, probably you want to, yeah, if you're headed north on either uh, 10 or 25 north slash west. Yeah. Um, yeah, get off at like University Ave and just kind of follow that. Okay. It's, it's pretty straightforward. All right. So just yeah. type into your iPhone, your smartphone and... Absolutely, because y'all, get you, there. you do have the website there. I mean, it's a City of Las Cruces site, but really, if you just search up in your search engine of choice, Las Cruces Railroad Museum, mm-hmm. y'all are probably going to be pretty high towards the top on either yeah. the uh, lascruces.gov or on the uh, visitors uh, page of the Visit Las Cruces. And so y'all have, of course, again, the transportation day coming up. We also have a lot of features within the museum itself, right? We do, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a small museum, but we cover a lot. Um most of our kind of interpretive focus, that sort of traditional museum space, mm-hmm. uh, focuses on the history of both the railroad and Las Cruces and the ways in which they kind of grew together. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got three, four rooms focusing on that. Uh, and then we have our model room, which is also a hit. Um, so we sure. have several layouts of model trains of various scales. Um, so people can check those out. Uh, and then, you know, we have a little table for younger kids, our younger visitors. Um, mm-hmm. And that's and exceptional it's it's a space where they can like touch things in a museum uh, so that's always special yeah Absolutely. So when are y'all's like regular hours? Of course, again, the, uh, the event that we got coming up today, again, a transportation day as it is again going on as we are airing this episode on Saturday. But uh, what are y'all's like regular hours of operation for people who might be like not able to if they weren't aware of this happening and going on today, but want to come out and see this museum and what y'all cover uh, any other time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're open Tuesday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Mm. Saturdays, we open at 9 uh, and also close at 4.30. Okay. So they can even come see it after the event. But again, yep, if you want to yep. see Transportation Day, that again, going on from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Again, train, trucks, bikes, and more. So a lot of features going on with that. And so... When it comes to actually the you know the museum and the branding of it itself, y'all be going through a little bit of revamps, right? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Just kind of freshening up our look. Freshening up the look now, definitely a good thing to be done. And so uh, the history that you all cover, so basically through the span of basically what have, would have come through the depot and of the transportation itself, among other things, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. That's right. So, okay, with the event coming up, how did this event come about? The uh, transportation day and wanting to focus it on the railroad museum specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's been an event that we have done for many years, uh, mm-hmm. long before I started uh, working with the museum system. Um, it started out as train day, and we focused exclusively sure. on trains. Uh, and then somewhere along the way, a handful of years ago, uh, we decided to kind of expand the focus mm-hmm. and include all aspects of transportation uh, okay. and kind of get, you know, more variety. Um, yeah, no, certainly. And it makes sense that it would be uh, engaging. So would you consider this uh, basically like a family focus event or how would you describe it? It is, uh, you know, appropriate and available to all ages. Uh, you know, folks are all welcome to, to come out if they're interested. It's totally free. Um most of our audience tends to be, you know, like younger kids mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, families with young kids for sure. Um, but we have some diehard rail fans. I'm sure. Uh, who come out and, and have a great time as well. I am sure. So when it comes to the actual you know, features within the museum, uh, do you all have the uh, phrase that is often get used, rolling stock, meaning the types of vehicles that actually roll along on the rails itself? Is that anything within the catalog or that will be featured particularly during this event? Uh, we do have one piece of rolling stock at the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. We have a caboose. Mm. Um, it is currently in the process of being restored. Um, mm. And it's, you know, stationary. It's outside on display. Uh, folks are welcome to kind of get up close, take a look from the outside. We have some interpretation about that. So, yeah, that, that will be available um, at the event uh, and, and afterward. Okay. So what era is that particular piece of rolling stock from? It is from the early 1900s. Okay. 
And so when it was used at that point in time, like what kind of was the function of that? I mean, caboose is, is a phrase that I think particularly any little kid that has been interested in trains and the history of them would know about. But for those that aren't familiar, I mean, basically, what, what purpose did it serve? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cabooses are actually really cool and critical to mm -hmm. um, trains and train travel in kind of that era of steam. Um, it was essentially so there were crew members who like lived uh, on sure. the caboose essentially. Um, and it was their job to keep an eye on the train in front of them because cabooses are at the end of the train. Right. Um, and they were looking out for anything that might have been amiss. So, you know, maybe they were looking at the track ahead. There's something on the tracks in the way. They would alert the engineers. They used lanterns mm -hmm. um, as, as signals. This was before, like, electricity and before radios. Yeah. Um, so and farther than you could maybe shout, particularly if right. you're trying yes. to hear yes. over Absolutely. the you know locomotive itself. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because steam engines are loud. Mm -hmm. I mean, modern diesel electric trains are also loud. Yeah, just um, you know, in different <laughs> ways. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, also, fire was a major risk. Mm -hmm. uh, these trains, so they're steam powered. It is actual fire that heats the water mm -hmm. to make the steam uh, to make the locomotive go. Mm -hmm. um, and these trains. The train cars themselves were largely made out of wood. Right. Um, the brakes would spark. You know, you have fire in, in the firebox. Um, brakes would spark. So the potential for the train to catch fire is, like, high. Um, we don't want that. So, it, again, that was yeah. an, another important role, like, crucial function of the, uh, of the crew members who were in the caboose, um, keeping an eye out for fires. And, again, they would alert crew members ahead of them on the train to like put that fire out as quickly as possible yeah i mean you got the sparks coming out of the smokestack i remember reading you know early uh, accounts of early travelers about how you did not wear white or anything light colored on the mm -hmm. train because mm -hmm. you would be then covered in the soot by it even if you had the windows closed because i mean it just is pervasive so if anything was mm -hmm. still sparking coming out of that like you mentioned i mean all the things hanging off of it on the train tracks itself here and so the the caboose particularly like when it was getting towards curves so they could have the view of the entirety of the span mm -hmm. of the remainder of the train which would have been more feasible back then a lot of people's you know uh, issues and if they're not taking train travel they may experience you know the miles long cargo trains that we have mm -hmm. particularly still going through our regions mm -hmm. today they were shorter than that at that point in time because the power levels were also you know the ability of the locomotive to actually move stuff was less if still significant um compared, yeah, I think compared was, to like, the modern ones anyway less Cargo. So steam engines are actually super powerful and yeah, have absolutely. like more torque than modern diesel electric engines. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think it was simply like there were fewer passengers and yeah, fewer true. cargo. Um, but yeah, still, still those trains were were quite long. Yeah, they definitely could get that way. But again, if you're just joining us, guest right now in studio with us is Tori Pyle, education curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. Again, we are talking about their upcoming and, frankly, ongoing right now event, a Transportation Day, as well as the museum itself. So if you want to find out more details about that, favorite search engine of choice, Las Cruces Railroad Museum, you'll come right up with it, adding in the details on what's going on today, Transportation Day, going on again today, May 6, 10 a.m. through 1 p.m. at the Las Cruces Railroad Museum, uh, right up there off Messiah Ave. So we're going to take that first break of this hour right now. So back after this break with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. 
This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Welcome back to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk, and we are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. Go there for our weekly promo announcements of the topics of the program coming up each and every week. Also, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can find, frankly, on both sides of this, the current and previous episodes that we've been doing ever since we've been putting them on live with full video, but particularly on the YouTube channel, you can find the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs covering more than the last couple of decades of history production and documentary filmmaking here in town from Capstone Production uploaded completely free for your viewing pleasure including some of the previous subjects on the show like from last week when we were featuring the last tour of the El Paso Smelter that video is up and available plus you can also see the more recent 20 ABC7 TV series uh, from El Paso History TV featuring kind of those like modern interpretation introduction to history topics Bernie Sargent was on camera for that and I was behind for a lot of it in order to do the 
both filmmaking, production, etc. Here. Also, a reminder to support our advertisers. Pepe's Restaurant in Canyon Tia, open for in-house dining, 6761 Donovan Drive. Call Pepe's at 915-877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. A feature of history themselves, keeping the old Griggs recipes alive with new food. Still making it new, but still keeping those great recipes and very nostalgic for a lot of my friends and family alive there. So be sure to visit them. We will be headed out there right after the airing of this program concludes for those wanting to come out and visit. Visit to us if you have uh, already been to Transportation Day. So to talk, of course, further about that, still joined here in studio by Tori Pyle, Education Curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. And again, uh, the day, the, the event that we got coming on, going on right now as we are airing Transportation Day, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. right there at the Railroad Museum in Las Cruces. So we we're talking a little bit about some of the kind of ongoing exhibits because even though a lot, a lot of vehicle focus going to be going on with this event. I mean, people are still going to be able to see what's going on in the museum because you also, of course, have hours even after the event today, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll be open until 4.30. So we did talked a little bit about, you know, there are some, you know, hands-on things for the kids and, of course, you know, like uh, the model train table. But are there, of course, more, you know, specific and, like, ongoing exhibits that you all have within the museum? Yes, yep. We have three spaces of, kind of historic interpretation, uh, both talking about the history of the railroads and Las Cruces, mm. as well as the building itself, mm, uh, okay. because it is an historic building. So we've kind of got, you know, several layers of interpretation going okay. on uh, at once. So we got, again, the view of the depot itself there from, again, the, the tracks side of things. So where there is the, you know, uh, safety gates to keep people from wandering too close when there is still active traffic coming nearby, as you mentioned. But the, the depot itself, you said, uh, dating back to uh, 1881, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so right now we are seeing an image of that 1881 depot. Um, it's actually not in the same location really? as the current depot. Yeah, it's in between. There are kind of several tracks uh, in the uh, area near, okay. the, uh, near the depot, and it's actually in between what was northbound and southbound. Uh, and then when they rebuilt the depot uh, several decades later, they moved it. So yeah. kind of all of the tracks are on one side, and the depot is on kind of the, the town side. So that's the 1881 we're showing right now. Now and then, so uh, then here's the early 1900s uh, depot, and yeah, you can see some just to kind of like quickly shuffle back and forth between those pictures. Yeah, you can see some differences both in the style of building. It almost looks like the previous one, the 1881 one, was maybe closer to two stories and some uh, very prominent uh, chimneys kind of on either end, and the one that is much closer to the one that is then uh, present day. That uh, kind of very recognizable uh, front facade towards the middle of the building. Definitely different styling than the mm -hmm. kind of initial mm -hmm. one. Yep, yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, so the first depot, the 1881 depot, was actually built out of wood. Um, it was kind of less, lesser, if you will. Um, and <laughs> okay. then uh, as kind of rail traffic, freight traffic grew, uh, we needed a new depot. Um, and so they rebuilt the depot with uh, masonry or brick. Mm, okay. Um it was kind of what we call a county seat style. So the hmm. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad, usually called the, just the Santa Fe, right. um, had two different styles of depots depending on the size of the town. Uh, okay. Las Cruces, by you know, 1910 when they were rebuilding this, was big enough that it warranted kind of that, that bigger and more prominent uh, county seat style uh, depot. And so that was made out of brick. Uh, and the Santa Fe Railroad kind of styled the depots, especially here in sure. Mexico in the Southwest, um, to fit in with the kind of mission revival style of Southwest architecture here. Uh, so it was stuccoed. It had, you know, tile roofs, um, again, referencing that that mission revival mm -hmm. uh, kind of kind of architecture style. So again, yeah, here is that, again, uh, 18 at uh, early 1900s depot, and then there's that, uh, a colorized version of it, well, from a postcard, I do believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Or postcard style looking type yeah. thing there, because it's a very, very red roof <laughs> that is, uh, again, not the total way that it looks right now. I mean, it's, it's reddish, don't get me wrong, but more of a natural as opposed to a shockingly red i guess the way you might be able to put it there so that's the building that people will also be able to see and or explore as part of the again a transportation day events that are going on again just to as i'll mention probably a couple more times before we're done with this uh this hour right now is going to be going on uh again may 6th the day 10 a.m through 1 p.m so you already missed a little bit of the time if you're just hearing about it right now but still got plenty of time to go out there and again check out the museum itself uh, most days out of the week except for start of the week basically mm -hmm. right 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 yep yep we're open uh tuesday through friday 9 a.m to 4 30 and then or i'm sorry 
10 a.m. to 4.30. Saturdays, we open a little bit early. We're open 9 a.m. There you go. Okay, so that's what's going on today. But we've got to take that next break right now. Again, still talking with Tori Pyle, Education Curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. Back after this break to talk more about the history of railroads in New Mexico and particularly in Las Cruces. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. 
it still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live, streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on the various social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, either under El Paso History Radio Show, El Paso History TV, or Andrew J. Polk. Of course, as we like this point to mention, some of our other great partners in promoting and dealing with different aspects of El Paso's history, including including the great group over at Celebration of Our Mountains, going both through some revamping and branching out, returning to the roots as well. Uh, They have begun doing their monthly meetings back at Artovino's Desert Crossings the last Thursday of each month. So if you missed the one that happened at the end of April right now, don't worry, there's another one coming up. Last Thursday of each month, uh, 7 p.m., they meet at Artovino's Desert Crossing in Sunland Park. If you want to find out more information and to reach out to them, best way to do so these days is via email, particularly with their new president or returning president, I should say, Phil Goodell. So that's philipgoodell43 at gmail.com is the email for him. That's P-H-I-L-I-P-G-O-O-D-E-L-L or three at gmail.com is a way to reach out to them. They're always looking for more people to get involved, to be a part of their production and a part of hosting and putting on these tours, focusing on both the natural, physical, and all the environment that surrounds us, whether man-made or otherwise. So check them out. Again, find them on social media, Celebration of Our Mountains. And, of course, uh, another one of our sponsors to mention for us as a great and very appreciative of the support they give us, Economy Wholesale Grocers, since 1958. Locally owned Economy Wholesale Grocers has provided customers across both sides of the border with quality products, great service, and top-notch customer service. Part of our history in their own way, find them online, economywholesalegrocers.com, with two locations in El Paso. So again, joining us here on studio right now, we do have Tori Pyle, again, education curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. And so we're talking, of course, about Transportation Day. I'm only going to say that probably a handful more times before we are done with this hour of the recording. As again, that event is going on right now, uh, 10 a.m. through 1 p.m. But of course, with, uh, you know, modern vehicles that you feature on the flyer there, you got, uh, you know, a uh, intermodal style uh, semi-rig there on one of Las Cruces uh, police uh, or law enforcement vehicles there. And then, of course, you know, one of the modern diesel engines, along with, you know, what you're going to be featuring, uh, the rolling stock you have, and other vehicles on site, including, of course, uh, some of the historic vehicles like the uh, Model A Club and uh, other historic actual uh, mode automobiles that you have there. But the history of transportation in Las Cruces goes well before even most of those types of things that we're going to be featuring there. I mean, you get back to the early days of it, one of the reasons that's arguably El Paso, as El Paso del Rio del Norte, and then, of course, the points all the way north of it, including Las Cruces, all the way up to Santa Fe, would be the Camino Real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, You know, Las Cruces was right before um, La Jornada del Muertos. um, Sure. So this this section of, of that trail that was essentially devoid of, water stops. It was, what, like 80, 90 miles? Uh, yeah. It, just dry. And hospitable, which, I mean, sure, you could, not technically supposed to, make but in an hour if you're driving, if you're doing it a bit, again, yeah, that's not totally the speed limits, but I'm uh, not a cop. But, yeah, but back in the day, I mean, we're talking about carts. Uh, we had their horseback caretas. I mean, the whole way about how Don Juan de Añate came through the area. I mean, it was treacherous because mm-hmm. that long without, I mean, even, like, shade, because, sure, mm-hmm. there are... Right. There are bushes, but they're not they're not doing a whole lot for you unless you're just kind of lying down and accepting the fate at that point. It feels like it, it kind of <laughs> seems like so that's kind of where and of course there were, you know, native peoples before that point, you know, moving about themselves. But I mean, as very much as a part of the history, the horse wasn't really a thing. So this was not one of those very densely populated areas. It would have been near, you know, I mean, there was the, uh, you know, Pueblos a little bit further north where there was. A little bit, you know, more temperate climate, among other mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the people that were in this area were closer to those water sources. There's a reason Waco Tanks was so very much focused on throughout history, because it had water. Mm-hmm. So that was the primary transportation route. So Las Cruces itself, or the, what we now call Las Cruces, not so much a feature before, well, we start getting into either, you know, you know, European or modern transportation, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the town was settled, um, or like originally founded in the late 1840s mm. um yeah again by kind of european descended folks um it was it was pretty sparsely populated as you said by right. by those european descended folks um you know certainly there were indigenous peoples um in the area still are 
Um, of course. And, yeah, just sort of this strange little town. Um, and then, you know, in the kind of late 1870s, 1880s, things started to shift and change. Mm. Um, and there were rumors that, oh, railroads, trains, they might they might start sure. coming through uh, this this part of the world. Um, you know, as, as you said, that kind of trade route was already established yeah. between... You know, El Paso and points south and Santa Fe points north and east. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it certainly made sense. There was a lot of competition between different rail companies uh, mm. at that time. So, again, this is like kind of 1860s, 70s, 80s um, to kind of break into these other markets that were not served by the railroads. Um, yeah. And so finally that did happen. And as we said, in, in 1881, uh, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad Company, uh, often called Santa Fe, um, sure. you know, arrived, if you will, in uh, in Las Cruces and kind of connected the town to... The, the wider Central world, yeah. so to speak, here. Because, I mean, we actually have a map of the uh, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. Um, don't see the exact date on this one, but just looking at... Well, I mean, we see uh, all the states represented there, so that gives you an idea. And also the idea that it uh, mentions the idea of uh, road trips on it, including uh, visiting the uh, Las Vegas Hot Springs. I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, different time areas of, of history that go on there. But So this was the extent of the railway, and so for those uh, not on our online and looking at that, you can see the you know routes to north and south. I mean, kind of a tracing of the Camino Real in a way on its own mm -hmm. of the railroad, and it goes up through you know uh, the tip of texas el paso of course and then up to las cruces and then branches out into the ways that go up to like santa fe out west towards you know arizona and california and then continuing on further north and kind of going out then further east back through again kansas i mean there's a reason was you know atchison topeka and santa fe railroad among other things it wasn't just a these sound like fun names they were also descriptive of the <laughs> coverage of the lines among other things so that arrival there and i'm going to say that pretty close to if not exactly on where some of those major branches that can be seen in that yellow state of new mexico here see if i can make that a little bit larger as to make it a little bit more useful uh for those again looking online that's it was pretty close to well what would be considered again the major part of las cruces today as one of those splits so leading to one of the theories that las cruces besides the you know three crosses that are very much the logo and the continuing you know way it's put forth i mean you see them on hills around town sometimes mm -hmm. as kind of the descriptive part of that as the you know the crosses but also as a major crossroads Kind of one of the theories about why it's called that is because mm -hmm. of the railroad, among other things, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, there's, and even today this is true, a, kind of a convergence of several different roadways, pathways, yeah, railways sure. um, that sort of all happen at, uh, at Las Cruces. So it is possible that, you know, the crosses being referred to are actually, as you said, crossroads. Crossroads, railroads. Uh, I mean, I mean, there was roadways and the Camino Real, among other things, and all the trails diverging from that uh, back in the, you know, colonial period, then the railroad coming through and the various different lines splitting off. And then, of course, as we were mentioning earlier, you know, I-10, I-25 and the mm -hmm. major splits that happened there. So a lot of reasons. And those are three crossings and different types of crossings, if you want to be specific. But again, that's a theory and maybe not one that that's uh, totally able to be right. borne out. Right. But so that's one of the reasons that, again, you ended up with the uh, train depots as it was, was because of this. And it, we've talked about this in the past in different ways, but specifically then for Las Cruces, the arrival of the railroad often, again, connecting to a larger world. I mean, there's always, the way I think of it is that there, it's always possible that something that was pre being produced could exist in this region. Like um, there's an example of one of the first boundary and water commissioners dragging steel bottom boats across the desert, being dragged by convict labor actually when the you know Texas and this region was first incorporated into the United States. So it's possible someone could have dragged it here, but once you get the railroads in, it becomes a lot easier to get, mm -hmm. you know, durable goods that weren't produced immediately within this region mm -hmm. because it could just come off of a train as opposed to dragging it across the desert mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly exactly um and we actually see that in the architecture in the mm -hmm. neighborhood um near the depot slash railroad museum um you know the alameda depot historic district is you know was built right around kind of early 1900s when the sure. uh, the depot uh was built and you know a lot of the architecture of the houses um are, are made of wood 
mm. which you know was pretty sparse in this part of the world yeah. um and hard hard to come by before the railroad uh with the arrival of the railroad it became much more inexpensive economically uh realistic for people to purchase lumber like small things we don't think about um but sure. lumber it was it was hard to purchase enough lumber to build a house uh prior to the railroad um and you know there's a lot of very fashionable um fancy and decorative elements uh in those houses that also came from elsewhere uh just because of you know the power whatever the way that they were produced sure often required like water um and consistently <laughs> running sure. water which is also hard to come by around here um so mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just take a, a stroll around the neighborhood hmm. uh, by the depot, there are examples of exactly that, that access to kind of the wider world, if you will, and sure. materials that were certainly possible to be produced locally, uh, but mm. it was super difficult and mm. really expensive before the railroad. I mean, like, sure, like, you know, again, technically 90 miles, give or take, or, you know, within that order of magnitude, you know, we got Ruidoso, Cloudcroft, the, the wooded areas, and yet, before railroads, imagine having to, okay, you got a tree down, what do you do with it? You're going to drag it back down, put it in the back of a cart, maybe, you know, bring it from a mill there. The feasibility and the ease of doing mm. it, completely different, and that's part mm. of the reason that the arrival of the railroads, I mean, cemented. I mean, El Paso and Las Cruces existed in their own ways. I know that El Paso's population was around like the order of a thousand two thousands mm -hmm. and then within like the first decade of the arrival the railroad had hit like 10,000. So saw a ballooning of the population both because of, I mean, people were able to arrive easier in this mm -hmm. region because of that. I mean, think about towns that like aren't on a highway in the modern ways mm -hmm. but then also because it then kind of you know drew focus from around the region as well because i mean there was winners and losers when it came to railroads those that got railroads tended to get bigger and those that were bypassed by it or in some cases chose not to have mm -hmm. it which it sounds baffling in the modern standpoint but those were choices that were made uh, those kind of tended to atrophy mm -hmm. those communities that is mm -hmm. Or they took a different trajectory. Sure. Uh, you know, they went in, in a different direction. Um, and actually a perfect example of that is uh, Las Cruces and Mesilla. Mm -hmm. So the ATSF, the Santa Fe, the railroad, um, approached both towns sure. uh, with, like, this proposition. Like, we want to put a depot in, in your town. What do you think? Um, and folks in Mesilla were like, no, no, no. No, we're no good. thank you. Um, whereas Las Cruces was much more enthusiastic. They were mm -hmm. in favor of it. And obviously that's where the, uh, the railroad depot was built. Um, and so between those two towns, we can see, yeah. like today, the difference in development. Um, Messia is still very much, it has a, a very different flavor, very different oh, atmosphere. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, it, I don't want to say it's like stepping back in time because that's not true. Um, but it retains a lot of that flavor and character of mm -hmm. kind of colonial era, um, very... I mean, the town like, square, I mean, we uh, the most way I heard it referred to, just, I mean, to kind of support what you're saying, is it's referred to as Old Messiah. Yeah. Because that is the, I mean, there are modern people who live there, obviously, mm -hmm. that, I mean, mm -hmm. we, there are modern conveniences <laughs> there, but it is a very different style, a very different type of development that has gone on there, and a lot of that can be traced back to, and I feel attributed to, the railroad, or the mm -hmm. lack thereof. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and, you know, now, present day, it's it's interesting to see like they've kind of capitalized on that as, sure, yeah. like a wonderful resource uh you know historic tourism and like yeah Which just we're in that, favor that of, absolutely. character and that flavor is is great to have preserved um yeah and it just like i said is, is very interesting to see sort of those two different tracks of yeah development so, with the railroad versus without i would argue that particularly you know messia was within you know striking distance of the railroad so not through but i mean a lot of then the economic activity began being focused on again now modern day las cruces though there are even starker examples that we had previously on the show of like say you know the shakespeare ghost town which was entirely bypassed and still kind of muddled along for a while but now is a ghost town among other mm -hmm. things so mm -hmm. kind of those stark examples gotta take that next break right now again guest right now in studio with us is tori pile education curator with the las cruces railroad museum continuing our conversation with her about what we got going on again with transportation day going on today after this break on news radio 690 ktsm you're listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archive radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. 
Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk, mentioning some of our other great partners and talking about different aspects of El Paso's history, including Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. You can go, go find him over on talkandrockradio.com. That's talk, A-N-D, rockradio.com. Going through a lot of different aspects of particularly El Paso's musical history. I mean, Rick Kern has his own bit of history, both in and around the region, and a lot of remembrances about the different venues, acts, performers, and 
just bands that came through our region. And so some of his uh, most recent episodes, including the Chambers Brothers, Willie Chambers, A Soul Psychedelicized. That's a word. And according to other things like uh, the Cascades, Royce Taylor, uh, the Grassroots previously, check out all of his previous and ongoing productions. Again, TalkinRockRadio.com. But again, joining us here in studio, closing out the first hour of the program today, we have had a Tory Pyle, education curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. Again, talking both about the museum, the history that you all feature that we've been delving through. But then, of course, there is going on today, right now, and you've Okay, you missed the first hour if you're just hearing about it right now, but it's still going on through 1 p.m. today, Transportation Day at the Las Cruces Railroad Museum, going on both you know on the tracks and on the parking lots, vehicles of all types, both some of the history that we've been discussing here today as well as, of course, modern, so a uh, fun event for the whole full family, and very importantly, free, right? Yes, yes, yeah, um, almost all of the kind of events and you know regular visitation uh, to all the city of Las Cruces mm. museums um, is free. Which is fantastic. Absolutely. And so that's, again, going on, again, through 1 p.m. today, the specific event, but the museum open today as it is, again, most days out of the week, toward, particularly towards the end of the week. Not at the earlier point, you're all closed at the start of the week, but uh, open through 4 p.m. today, right? 4.30. 4.30. Yep. Thank yep. you for correcting me. 4.30 today, and so people, even if they miss the event, can still go there and check it out. But, I mean, you all been doing some revamping and, and hosting a lot of, like, you know, fun stuff like this, right? Yeah, yeah, we do have um, pretty frequent events uh, across all four museums um, throughout the year. Again, most of those are free, open to the public. Um, mm. The Railroad Museum is uh, at 351 North Messiah Street. Our mm. other museums are like, sure. you know, 411 more or less uh, North Main Street. So we have actually two different locations. No, oh, uh, okay. There are three museums downtown. We've got a Museum of Art, Museum of Nature and Science, and the Brannigan Cultural Center. So there's a variety mm. of things to do there as well. Absolutely. So, again, uh, website for that, uh, best way to find it is just search up the Las Cruces Railroad Museum, and you'll find all of it, as well as then, of course, links to the other rail museums, including like the Brandigan Cultural Center, Museum of Art, Museum of Nature and Science, as you mentioned. So all of this uh, available and able to be seen online. But again, if you're looking for the depot itself, this is, again, the uh, railroad side of it. But look for that kind of very stylized, like you said, uh, you know, uh, Mission Revival style building that'll be you know having a lot going on with it today and of course all the vehicles that'll be going on as long as they get there before one o'clock today yes yep exactly so when it comes to putting on these events and particularly covering the history what what interests you the most and what do you find most you know interesting and what do you like most about doing this kind of stuff i well, i'm an historian at heart mm -hmm. uh, so i love digging into the past and the history and really understanding peoples of the past uh, you know, it's really that simple. Like, why did people make the choices that they made? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what was life like for them in just an everyday setting? Um, you know, one of going through school, one of the questions one of my uh, teachers would always ask is, you know, why do things look the way they do? Hmm. And that's, that's kind of the question that is so interesting to me. And there's so many different ways to answer that. Sure. Like, that's a really nerdy answer, but you know, whatever, I'm a nerd. So, <laughs> so it fits. Um, but yeah, in, in short, that's that's what interests me. And like I said, all of the different and diverse approaches to kind of understanding everyday life for people in the past. And of course, how that informs our modern day today, like you were talking about the neighborhoods surrounding the depot and the reason they look the way they do because of the accessibility brought by it, the building itself. There's a whole lot of ways that this can be explored and you all do and you all will be again mentioning that at least one more time right now, Transportation Day going on. As this episode is airing at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., so you still got a little bit of time if you want to head out there. But of course, uh, the Las Cruces Railroad Museum open most days out of the week, but find them online. Just search up Las Cruces Railroad Museum. So again, our guest right now here in studio has been Tori Pyle, education curator with the Las Cruces Railroad Museum. Thank you very much for coming in to talk to us about what you all go got going on. That specific event again going on today is, but was as in addition what you all do all of the days out of the week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Andrew, for, for having me. I'm happy to uh, have the opportunity to chat. Absolutely, and happy to talk with you. And that's going to do it for the first hour of this program. We've still got another hour to go, so stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show. Coming up in hour two on the program, I'm going to be visiting with the Concordia Heritage Association, particularly as we get closer to Memorial Day and the many events and uh, commemorations that will be going on around that. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show, hour two, coming up right after the top of the hour news on this break on News Radio 690. KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. 
Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on youtube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV 
for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk, getting into the second hour of the program as we are today. Going to start off that uh, second hour with a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. Before we get back to our discussion about history, visiting this hour with the Concordia Heritage Association and about the celebrations and commemorations they'll be doing leading up to Memorial Day. But with that history moment right now, focusing on this point, the history history and different aspects of the Sacred Heart Church. Sacred Heart Church in the Diocese of El Paso was built by Father Carlos Pinto, a Jesuit priest called the Apostle of El Paso. 
In 1892, Padre Pinto built two churches with schools, Sacred Heart for Spanish-speaking Catholics and Immaculate Conception for the English-speaking Catholics. Sacred Heart was dedicated in June 1893. In November 1898, the rectory was completed. A second story was added to the rectory in 1911, enlarging it to 22 rooms. Sacred Heart Parish has been continuously staffed by Jesuits since its founding. In 1929, the original church was replaced with the larger church you see today. It was built with room for 2,000 worshipers to accommodate the influx of Mexican refugees during the era of religious persecution in Mexico. Sacred Heart remained under the administration of Jesuits of the Mexican province until 1944, when it was returned to the New Orleans province. On July 31, 2014, the central and southern provinces took over the administration of this frontier mission. Today known as the Heart of the Barrio, Sacred Heart has a strong spirit and sacramental life. It also provides adult education and social services, assisting with the needs of the poor in the area. Since the parish was founded in 1892, the Jesuits there have provided spiritual and practical ministries for people in El Paso, El Segundo Barrio, and across the border in Juarez. Many El Pasoans trace their history to this church. The oldest building in the Sacred Heart Church complex is 130 years old, and the newest is 100 years old. They are in great need of restoration and infrastructure upgrades, but this Barrio Church has limited financial resources. A campaign is now underway to raise funds to restore and repair the church. To get involved, go online to RestoreSecretHeartChurch.org. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Also, another mention of some of our great partners in El Paso history work, particularly Barbara Given Bainey, who is the operator of the great Facebook group Remember in El Paso When. Go there for archive pictures galore, very robust discussions, and different aspects being brought up about all eras of El Paso history, including some of the ones we've been discussing here. They have more than 33,000 members, getting close to 34 as of last check in any case. But please remember, the administrators have worked hard for researching for photos with our history attached. So they do ask that if you are using or sharing their photos, credit be given to their site. And a lot of credit to be given indeed to particularly Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, along with admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, Jim Gerber, and moderators Ben Vincent and Dan Graves. It's no mean feat to keep such a large group on task and on track, so they're always looking for a mu- for few more good hands or eyeballs on the situation. So if you're at all interested in participating, becoming a moderator or an administrator, Please reach out to them, the Facebook group, Remember in El Paso When. But joining us here in studio right now, as we have on Hour 2 of the El Paso History Radio Show, we are joined by Patricia Kidney, President of the Concordia Heritage Association. Thanks very much for joining us for this hour of the program. Thanks for inviting us. We're so excited to be able to share this. Absolutely, because as we are now firmly in May now, of course, as we're getting a little bit further into the month, there are some very important dates that start coming up when it comes to not exactly celebration, but certainly can be a part of it, more commemoration and remembrances of those. Memorial Day, end of the month, is, of course, you know, one of those very important dates that has had a lot of meaning and significance, and particularly locally here. I mean, there's a lot of military experience and those that are, you know, currently involved in it and that have had those and loved ones laid to rest from it. So it has a lot of significance for this community, and that's something you all, as a, you know, historic pioneer cemetery, have a lot to go through. That's right. When our association was formed in 1990, we decided to honor our veterans. That was a big focal mm-hmm. point. So for years, we met on Memorial Day and put flags out. And uh, we put the flags on each grave that we mm-hmm. knew. And we took different sections because it is 52 acres. Right. Yeah. So yeah. We, had a, a, it, it, we have a nice foundation of honoring the veterans. And that's a very important thing to do so as, I mean, the whole idea of Memorial Day is, you know, remembering those who served and made the ultimate sacrifice here, just as I often do. Whenever we're talking about this, the difference between Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and, you know, Armed Forces Day, the difference is those that, you know, gave their lives in service, uh, those that were in service but maybe didn't pay the ultimate price in doing so, and, of course, then honoring those that are still currently serving. So Memorial Day is a very certainly important one. And so, yeah, they mean the site and the full expanse of it, as we've had uh, some of the pictures up here. I still really like this one because it gives the 
kind of the idea of almost like almost into the disappearing point of the size of it. Also, this one's another, if more slightly more stylized one of the scope and span of it. But when it comes to particularly when it for, for veterans and those that were, you know, it died in service, you all have had a lot of very specific areas that have been dedicated to that, including more of the, the these would be more of a, you know, a cenotaph in the way I would put it, but these type of things for those that served in different capacities and now the way you all remembering them is certainly significant and important in its own right. It is. In 2009, we dedicated the Buffalo Soldier mm-hmm. Memorial Area and uh, that was a real li- uh, year-long effort. Yeah. And we've been uh, dedicating the program to the Buffalo Soldiers since 2013. Hmm. Okay. So, of course, what we got coming up for this year, you are continuing that focus. I mean, this is certainly part of it and part of it that will be mentioned. But you are focusing on a spe- basically a specific era and a specific era from when there are those that are been interred in Concordia come from, right? That's right. This year, we're going to uh, feature the veterans from World War I hmm. and uh, 1917 to 1918. Okay, very specifically there. Of course, there was a lot of activity going on in and around our region there specifically, but there's like one major way that you all are focusing on that through. Like it's basically a specific feature that exists over at Concordia that kind of provides the basis for this, among other things, right? That's true. Uh, We have been very uh, intrigued by this cenotaph uh, since uh, I've been with Concordia since 1992. And this has always piqued my interest, drawn my heart to it. So we have 10 names listed there. And uh, if you can read that, it mm-hmm. would help me. I can't quite see it. Yeah, so getting a closer view to it here. It's a large um, gray stone obelisk that reads at its base, arrested, erected to the memory of the El Paso Masons who made the supreme sacrifice in the World War 1917 to 1918. And so there's uh, Chas M. Stromberg, Ira C. Watkins, Abraham uh, Posner, Harold E. Kilburn, John H. Lindy, Robert Baker, Jazz A. Fraser Jr., Joe Hunt uh, Reney, Carl Farmer, and Casper S. Crowell are the ones listed on that actual monument itself. So where is this within Concordia itself? This is uh, right at the Gateway West entrance when you get off the freeway and come in, and it's right at the corner of Stevens and Gateway, and it's about 24 feet, I believe. It's mm, okay. at least two stories, I think. Um, and so my first question was, who are these people, and where are they buried in Concordia? Mm-hmm. Well, then we found they're not buried in Concordia. Oh, really? They uh, are buried throughout the cemetery, I mean, mm. throughout the excuse me, not the cemetery, but in uh, there's several in France in the uh, military know. cemeteries. Okay. They're in uh, national cemeteries throughout the United States, and we have one in Arlington, as a matter mm. of fact. Okay. So uh, we've just recently been able to get that documentation through some of our partners. So uh, it's very important to acknowledge this because it was such a an event at the time in 1918. So we decided to make this our focal and then to bring in all of the veterans from World War I who are buried at Concordia, and that number is 61. Right. So, as I mean, yeah, that uh, obelisk, as we were mentioning there, that's just a, and again, the reason you mention it as a, a cenotaph monument would be the way to put it, cenotaph specifically referring to a, a, a marker of someone's passing that does not necessarily denote, or specifically does not denote their actual final resting place. That's what I mean. I believe uh, so. I mean, that's why, I mean, uh, as we talked about previously on this program in recent uh, weeks, uh, the cenotaph outside of the Alamo in San Antonio is, I mean, sure, it commemorates, of course, you know, and memorializes the deaths of those, but they're not actually interred there. So that's why that's this applies in the same kind of way. It commemorates and mentions those that uh, did give, again, the ultimate sacrifice in World War One, but does not actually denote where they are interred. But 
is a marker in its own right. So that's part of the reason that's uh, mentioned that way, as opposed to being like a mausoleum or a gravesite on its own. And so that's a specific set of them. But like you mentioned, 61 throughout Concordia overall outside of that group, uh, or including yes. partly that group that is mentioned there. That's right. And we've, uh, we have their names, mm. and uh, they will be listed on the program this time. So, and they, again, are scattered throughout the cemetery. Mm. So, uh, you know, we're unique. We don't have a particular area. Right. So we're really excited to bring this to this historical part of our, our lives to mm. the public. So the events going on for this, of course, you know, Memorial Day, Monday, May 29th this year, and you all be doing this starting at 10 a.m. that day, That's, right? That is true. We will be at the Meditation Garden, which you enter at the Buffalo Soldier mm -hmm. Gate, and uh, it's a lovely garden we've established over the last few years. Yeah, okay. And uh, then we'll be starting at 10 o'clock. We'll have shade, mm -hmm. we'll have seating, and we'll have water. All very good and important things, particularly being out that way. And you have some uh, very important uh, partner organizations, both for this event and, and kind of in general, and doing this kind of you know veteran marking and this type of commemorations, right? That's true. We have a lot of great partners. Uh, of course, without our maintenance part of Concordia, mm -hmm. getting it all ready, all the cactus trim back. Oh, sure. <laughs> and uh, so the, we have these wonderful partners. We have the Combat Veterans motorcycle association mm -hmm. group that's chapter 23 two and then we have the buffalo soldier motorcycle group right we have donnie brown chapter of buffalo soldiers we have the uh post 812 vfw post 812 helping us this year for the first time and of course we have masonic lodge 130 mm -hmm. and our most important partner is the 82nd airborne Absolutely. So a lot of support goes into this and particularly for this and this type of event. But coming up on the need for that first break of this hour right now, again, guest joining us in studio right now is Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association. You want to find them. I'd say Facebook is one of my preferred ways to see what they have coming up and going on. So if you want to uh, check that out, uh, of course, find them over on uh, Facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery. But a lot more information that will also be, of course, even more discussing when it comes along to this. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free 
many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, I want to tell you about what we got coming up for you next week on the program, as yes, we are continuing on as we do every Saturday, 10 to noon, right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Next week, we're going to be speaking with the International Coin Club of El Paso on the uh, commemorative history medals that they produce and issue every year, the aspects of history they recognize in coin collecting in general. So be sure to tune in for that next week on the program. And, of course, a lot of different partners in El Paso history that we work with on this. And, again, uh, just a reminder to uh, support and uh, thank our sponsors for helping to make sure that we can keep talking about uh, history in El Paso. Again, after the program airs today, we will be headed out to Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant in Canutillo, as well as, remember, our uh, one of our newer sponsors there, uh, Economy Wholesale Grocers, with two locations in El Paso. And, of course, find them online at economywholesalegrocers.com. But, again, joining us here in studio right now, we are joined by uh, Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association. Thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, um, I'm so thrilled to be here. Absolutely happy to have you on as we're talking about, again, the events and commemorations that you all will be holding when it comes to Memorial Day this year. And again, specifically focusing as you all are on the World War I history. Specifically, I mean, Memorial Day is for all Americans who have given their lives in American conflicts, as was uh, declared by Congress back in 1971. Specifically, though, the, the history of the commemoration, uh, the event itself goes back to basically the Civil War. I believe that's correct. So when we're talking about that, and I've looked at this uh, both for news reports and other things I've done over the years, specifically it was the Grand Army of the Republic established Decoration Day on May 5th, 1868. So in the aftermath, of course, of the Civil War. And it was Decoration Day because Basically, the idea of it was as, I mean, the national cemeteries were becoming a thing. You know, Arlington National was established, not exactly then, but as part of the aftermath, of course, of the Civil War. And then the idea to go out and decorate the graves of those that gave their lives in the Civil War, I mean, particularly from the Union side of things, Grand Army, the Republic, and all that aspect of it. But it came 
to be, it changed over the years, particularly after it was then firmly declared to be May 30th every year, but then uh, more modernly it was declared to be, you know, the uh, last Monday of the month as it is now, which is why we're going to be doing it not not on May 30th, but May 29th is Memorial Day this year. Let's just make that perfectly clear. And so it's gone through a lot of changes, and it was basically kind of in that time frame that you all are going to be marking uh, the commemoration of specifically of after World War I because it used to be and was still throughout even the better part of last century. It was that it was specifically for Civil War and the ones that gave their lives there. And then after World War I became to be basically expanded to be all of those who gave their lives in American conflicts. That's true. And it became something that organizations got behind Mm -hmm. and they would go out and they would clean the graves Mm -hmm. but they would also decorate them with small american flags american flags wreaths i mean i'm sure on that date as well as y'all's commemoration others in our area and across the nation will be placing wreaths or particularly you know at you know the uh, tombs of the unknown soldier in arlington and other places including locally such as fort bliss national cemetery but uh the way that uh, i mean you all have been doing this specifically in holding this this type of event in the cemetery in your own way for how far of back does y'all's specific uh, commemorations go back well of course we started putting flags out no, in sure. 1990 but then in 2012, we started having an actual ceremony. Hmm. And the first one was when we dedicated the Camp Concordia sign. Uh, hmm. And that was, ironically, at the Grand Army of GAR, of the Republic, hmm. um, over at what we call our Veterans Section. Hmm. And uh, then we decided it needed to be in a more accessible place. So hmm. we moved okay. it then in 2013 to the Buffalo Soldier area. Right, and that's that area that we have had those pictures up of uh, that has the prominent flags, among other things, on flag poles that are always established there. And then, of course, the, uh, again, commemorative grave markers. Well, I guess uh, headstones would be the right way to put it here because those are not actually graves on their own because they are interred elsewhere, but this is of that specific remembrance. So there has been those kind of focuses in years past on different eras, including, you know, Buffalo Soldiers and aspects like this, but this one focusing primarily on World War I one as your primary focus this year. Yes, and we're really excited to be able to bring uh, the different segments. Right. And, and and we are, one of our features will be having uniforms oh, from all okay. the different wars. And uh, we'll have that there on display. And each year we're going to be rotating. Because, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, as the Concordia has been established for a long time and the coverage of history that y'all can go through, there have been, I think it was 286 veteran, um, actual veterans interred in Concordia that have been identified so far. At least, and we're finding more as we speak. Yeah, at least is probably the right way to put it here because there's more research and more identification to be done with that. So, again, guess right now with us, Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association. Got to take that next break right now. This is our short segment. But coming out of this, talk more about the program and some of the ongoing both efforts as well as what can be seen coming up. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690. KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV, 
and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Welcome back to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so. We appreciate the comments that you leave all leave for us, primarily over on the Facebook, facebook.com slash El Paso History Radio Show. But you can also leave similar and find all the previous recordings of this program that we've done on air and in this video format over on the YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Of course, we have some of our other great partners in both promoting this program as well as other aspects of El Paso and current El Paso history. Uh, of course, El Paso Inc. is El Paso's business journal. El Paso Inc. is available for home and business delivery to receive El Paso Inc. and their unique and in-depth reporting each and every week. You can order it online or just get your online subscription at elpasoinc.com. They also have a bunch of events that are going to be going on throughout this coming month here. I want to mention a few of them right now, such as uh, May 8th, the Harvey Girls of El Paso will meet at 2 p.m. at the historic Union Passenger Station Depot. Uh, the program will be historic newsstands in El Paso and Las Cruces Railroad Depots. The public is invited for information on that. 
Call 915-241-6285. That's 915-241-6285. And then on May 10th, the Southwest Chapter of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society will meet at 6 p.m. at Timo's Mexican Restaurant, 2000 Montana. Steve Heatland will present Logistical Tale for Supporting U.S. Army Early 20th Century. Public is invited there as well. Again, phone number 915-241-6285. And a little bit later on, uh, May 12th, the Rio Grande Chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas will meet at 11 a.m. at the Greenery in Sunlit Park Mall. Program will be the installation of officers for 2022, 2023 rather, through 2024. And again, information there, 915-760-5775. That's again, 915-760-5775. Five seven seven five, And then, of course, coming up towards the end of the month for Memorial Day, there will be the celebration and commemoration going on at Concordia Cemetery. So, again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have uh, Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association. So, when it comes to the actual program, we've talked about how you're going to be commemorating specifically veterans, as was kind of inspired by the memorial that exists there at Concordia at Cemetery of the specifically the Masonic veterans and those that gave their lives in World War One. So that was kind of the the genesis of the idea for this year, I guess you could put it. I believe so. Yes. Okay, and so the way that you're going to be, I mean, we've been doing commemoration for years already of those, specifically from World War One. We talked previously on the program how there was the uh, new headstone that you all have dedicated to uh, James B. Biggs, of course, the namesakes for Biggs Army Airfield and previously uh, Biggs Air Force Base. As, uh, you know, he had a headstone there that was, I mean, he, not a standard one the way we expect to see veteran headstones to these days. Also a little bit worn, so that one has been newly replaced. But, of course, that is that uh, World War One time frame that we are talking about, that he uh, gave his both service and his life in there, flying a, particularly as an aviator both in the region and then, of course, uh, out in um out in Europe during that part of the conflict, and this is part of the program that you all had uh, a little bit earlier this year, and so that's part of it, but I mean, there was a lot of other service. I believe this is a picture of the uh, 1st Pennsylvania Artillery group that came through El Paso, so potentially on their way. This was back in 1916, but I mean, there was a lot of activity going on both in our region uh, when it comes to, like, you know, the response to the Mexican Revolution, but there was a back and forth of both dealing with essentially frontier concerns and uh, this one's another uh, one example of the uh, national guard encampment that was going on in our region so there's both you know kind of territorial concerns locally and then also then deployments coming through our area because you know fort bliss was already a major post at that point in time for transportation headed out towards europe particularly in that you know 1917 1918 time frame we're talking about that's true it was a proving ground of uh, a way to transition from a horse uh, oh, cavalry mm. and, and troops into foot soldiers and to air combat and to the and to tanks yeah the mild mechanization kind of yes and it was to. a way to to understand how to make all of that work yeah absolutely so that's kind of what you're going to be commemorating that at the very least i mean these are with those pictures that we just had up and we'll pop up again real quick these are the eras that we're talking about yeah you can see in that first one with the uh first pennsylvania artillery that they are there's a lot of horses there that's true and that is very much i mean 1916 that was still pretty much the feature of it that was one of the primary battlefield uh, conveniences and even at that point and what's going on during like say the punitive expedition in our area is very much being explored to not have that be the case anymore so that's part of the history that's part of the time frame that again you all are commemorating so what will be going on during the program uh, during the progression of it that you will be holding again at the end of the month uh, may 29th well we're going to have it it's a very uh, military type program mm -hmm. So we encourage people to dress in patriotic colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll begin with, of course, the, uh, the presentation of flags. We'll have the sounding of the, of the anthem. And then we will have a Native American blessing mm -hmm. by a gentleman who's uh, very local in this area to do this for us. We will have uh, our... our recognition mm. of all of these people who are listed for uh, their names will be on the program we'll have a keynote speaker talking about world war one and talking mm -hmm. about the impact on el paso and the el paso community and that will be local fort bliss historian john hamilton mm -hmm. we're very pleased to have him this year 
And then we will also have uh, different things. My, the thing that always ties me mm -hmm. in to this program is the presentation of the empty table mm. where uh, there, a table is presented and all uh, segments of the military are represented mm -hmm. at that table. And it's an empty table because they have passed on. They have given their lives for our country. And it is, it, everything is a very symbolic mm -hmm. down to the, the plate, the salt, the rose. And uh, when this is brought out, I think then each one present understands that impact. We all have relatives. We all have, are impacted by someone in our family or our friends who have gone on before us and paid that ultimate sacrifice. It is a very solemn event. Mm. And it is, of course, ended by the sounding of taps. Yeah, of course, here. And so that will be going on 10 a.m. Monday, May 29th, Memorial Day on its own here. And just to note, it is absolutely a free event. And, they, again, you'll want people to enter through the Buffalo Soldier Gate on Stevens near uh, Ellen Jays. And it, how much of a response, how, how much capacity do you have for people to come out for this? Well, we usually average about 100 people who come okay. out. And, of course, uh, you'll need to park on the streets. Sure. Uh, you can park in the Masonic section. You can park inside Concordia entering from Yandel. Ah, okay. Yandel, pardon me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there'll only be the VIP parking allowed inside the Buffalo Soldier area. Mm. And that will be designated by the 82nd Airborne for their veterans. Because they're, uh, as being veterans, they all have some mobility issues. Oh, sure. mm -hmm. So we want to be sure and make it easy for them to come in and this year we will have uh poppies oh. and flat miniature flags for each participant yeah the poppies you don't often see them as much around on on this side of the pond so to speak here i've often seen them whenever i've had travels in europe around this time as they have their own you know remembrance days and those kind of things yeah those uh, you know red and black poppies as yes. is often described by the you know, in flanders fields among other things that's true they are being donated by the vfw post 812 mm -hmm. which is uh they're a new partner for us this year Excellent. So, again, you have a lot of partner organizations, including, um, uh, along with it, we do have a picture up of them that I want to pop up at this point in time, the uh, Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association that have certainly been an active part of this and so will be a part of this ceremony and this part of it. But, again, the focus that you all have on the World War One history specifically, I want to focus on that for one more second here because it's like you've been saying, part of a rotating one because, I mean, Memorial Day is for everyone who gave their lives in an american conflict but there are i mean different aspects of it that you'd be looking at so what are some of the previous ones you have done and do you have an eye towards what maybe some of the future ones will be yes we previously talked about camp concordia sure. when it was established and then for the last 10 years we have honored the buffalo soldier history to our nation mm -hmm. and the 42 uh Buffalo soldiers who are buried in Concordia itself mm. and who have those uh, honorary headstones there. Right. And then uh, starting, this is the first year we're, we're doing the rotation. Mm. We will rotate each year. Of course, we have, uh, we have Mexican War veterans mm. going back mm. to 1848. Right. We actually have three that we know of. Oh, okay. And we have, of course, the veterans uh, of the uh, Civil War, both Confederate and Union. Right. We have the Frontier Army. We have Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have World War One, of course, one, World War Two. We have Korea. We have the Gulf. We have Vietnam. So we will be rotating each year. Ah, okay. So, again, a lot of history commemorate there. And, again, Memorial Day coming up Monday, May 29th, 10 a.m. at Concordia Cemetery. I uh, will be in more information on there. And, again, uh, details are very much available over on, I would recommend, the uh, Concordia 
Concordia Cemetery Facebook page for Concordia Heritage Association, facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery to find that. And again, joining us here in studio right now is Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association. Got to take that next break right now. Coming out of this break, tell you a little bit more about the programming and also some of the other ongoing programs that they have when it comes to these and related issues. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this brief break on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. 
That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Welcome back to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Again, joining us here in studio right now, Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association, as we've had uh, most of this hour, getting towards the end of this hour and the show for today. So just kind of want to bring it back home that, of course, there is going to be the Memorial Day commemorations happening out at Concordia Monday, May 29th, starting at 10 a.m., the actual programming itself at the Meditation Garden at Concordia. Concordia Cemetery, commemorating, commemorating specifically the World War I uh, members that are both interred in their history there, including those that have the like, cenotaph and other memorials there for them in the area. But from that era, from that World War I time frame and technology as part of y'all's rotating series uh, that's going to be going on for the years to come through the many different conflicts that can be exemplified as being half and, and uh, those that gave their sacrifice from our area that are interred there at Concordia. But I also want to point out that there are related programs to this. As much as, you know, the Memorial Day commemoration itself is incredibly important, the commemoration and honoring of those and veterans in Concordia does continue on. You all have a specific program, the Veterans Headstone Replacement Project, that has been going on for a while now and is uh, very much still ongoing now, right? That's true. We started this in 2018 mm. when we realized and locating the 286, many of the veterans did not have a headstone. Mm -hmm. uh, or what they had was damaged or weather, weather worn. So we started the process and we were joined in partnership by the Combat Veterans Motorcycle mm -hmm. Association mm -hmm. who helped us. They had special projects to help with the funding of these memorial headstones, these military headstones. Now, the military headstone is free provided by the VA. However, there's a great deal of documentation. Right. And uh, once it's uh, finally approved, there is a fee that goes in with this documentation for the VA. And then uh, the, there's a cost to receive the headstone locally right. mm -hmm. and a cost to then place it in the ground, do the cement, do the actual placement of it. So we have a cost of $155 mm. per headstone, and we are asking for donations to uh, do just one. Or you can do more, of course. Oh, sure, yes. as many yes. as you want. Yeah. Yes, as many as you want. And so to date, we have put in the ground 19. Mm. We have many more in the queue, as we call it, and waiting for the VA to finalize the documentation. If it's not up to their standards, they send it back. We go to work again. Sure. And I mean, there's a lot of research and yes. other factors that go into this. And one of the good examples of the way that this kind of replacement has worked, this was an existing headstone, but again, that one for uh, Lieutenant Biggs. This was the previous one, a I mean, not unsubstantial block of stone as it was, if a little bit hard to read, weather-worn, like you mentioned here. Right. And this is what it was replaced by, the one that I think people have come to expect in the modern day when they actually yes. see a headstone, particularly with any kind of veteran implications to it. That's, I mean, tombstone, iconic kind of tombstone shape, slightly rounded at the top, and that bright black lettering that stands out in firm relief on that again this is a uh, firmly vertical headstone as opposed to being a little bit lower to the ground you can uh, there's a choice no, okay. there is a choice and uh we prefer the vertical mm -hmm. and uh something i've learned is that each war has its own shape oh really and uh this happens to be indicative of world war one Wow, actually. Yes, I just learned that. So I did not uh, know that. Okay. And then there's different uh, a different style used for each of the veterans from each of the of the wars. Wow. So that is an example of what has been put into place. So, I mean, in even just doing that research and identifying those uh, 286, like you mentioned, uh, there's a process to do that because, I mean, given the long history that exists for Concordia itself, sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't documentation. So the process to go through 
and confirm what may exist yes. out there or even just, you know, find the records is its own thing. So there's a lot to be done when it comes to this and even identifying yes. the 61 World War One, either, you know, veterans or those that gave their lives in it has been a process on its own. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we also verify through the DD-214. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sometimes the census rolls will spell the name differently. Yeah, okay. I mean, there are just all kinds of things. But, but with our documentation and with working with different groups, particularly the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, mm-hmm. uh, they have been just God sent to us. They also put the flags out for us. And uh, in, in doing this sponsorship, we have opened this to the public, and we give you the choice of which war, which veteran, veter- not by name, but by each war. Oh, sure. Mm. You can choose, and then we have a form that we ask you to complete. And when we finally receive that headstone, we will notify the sponsor and once it's installed, they will be able to come out. We will meet them and show them where, quote, their veteran is. Hmm. And they can then get to know more about that veteran and spend time remembering that person. Certainly an important endeavor. And again, if you want to see that very specifically, we do have Memorial Day coming up Monday, May 29th, 10 a.m., the ceremony at Concordia Cemetery with all the events going along with that. The program, as we have discussed here again, details on that, what is coming up and what you all need to know. Concordia Heritage Association, again, we recommend the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery. So again, joining us in studio right now has been Patricia Kidney, president of the Concordia Heritage Association. Thank you very much for joining us this hour to talk about what you all got going on, that upcoming programming, and ongoing parts of what you all are doing to remember this particular segment of our population and past population here today. That's true. And we also have progress on the Chinese Memorial Pagoda Mm. that we'll be coming back to talk about. We have three of the six pillars up now. Oh, excellent. So a lot going on there, so a good reason to go check it out, even just on its own, on Memorial Day, and again, for that specific programming. So again, thank you very much for talking to us about all of this. Always my pleasure. Thank you. And again, thank you all very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. Want again to make specific mention of thanking for our advertisers, including uh, Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant in Canyotillo, where we will be headed out as basically right after this concludes airing on 690 today, as well as uh, some of our new advertisers, including, again, Economy Wholesale Grocers. We appreciate their commitment to continuing to talk about El Paso history, and we'll be talking as we continue to plan on doing that throughout much more of our history. So I want to thank you all for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We'll be back next week as we are every Saturday, 10 to noon, right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Have a great weekend, y'all. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook.